Assalamu alaikum. Mr. Moderator, our distinguished guests, brothers and sisters, our friends and, and our enemies. Overly diplomatic, but we're going to let him speak, okay? Let him, let him speak his piece. Let him, let him get, let, get what he's got. Get so we got to be fair because he is a scholar. Right, we've got to respect him as a scholar. Let's keep watching, y'all. If you call them foolish, as some of the Muslims are calling each other, you're not going to win. If you call them naive, everybody accuses everybody else of being naive in politics. Everybody accuses everybody else of being naive. Both parties are accusing, both Muslims of each side are accusing each other of being naive. And we also have been accused of being naive when we say vote third party. Everybody is accusing everybody. Who gets to decide? Who will judge the judges? Who will be the final, final arbiter? Who will decide? Who can predict the future? Who can predict the future such that you think this person is evil and when they get into office, actually it turns out may, they might do something that is beneficial. Politics is filthy and dirty. Politics is full of lies. Politics is deceit and we all know this. So therefore, if you want to say they're wrong, you can say that. If you want to say they're foolish, I think you are being foolish when you use the term foolish because you're not going to win points. But it is not un-Islamic. But the minute you say you are a traitor to Allah and His Messenger, the minute you say you have betrayed the Ummah, the minute you bring in the religion card, even as I have strong personal views, I will say, no, this is crossing the red line. You cannot use the religious card between Muslims who think that the way to support Palestine is this versus this versus this versus this. The only time you can use the religious card is if somebody literally says, I don't care about the genocide. I want my taxes to go down. That person, you say you have betrayed the ummah. You are selfish, you are more concerned about your pennies and cents versus the thousands of children dying, then you can use a religious card. But anybody who says, I believe third party, Democrat, Republican, is going to be better for the cause of Gaza, that's their analysis. And who are you to force your analysis on other people? Let us go back to our hero, Zubayd ibn al-Awwam. Okay. So we heard what Dr. Yasakari had to say. And he's a sheikh, he's a scholar, he's way more knowledgeable than me, way more knowledgeable than most of us. But with all due respect with Dr. Yasakari, it's inappropriate in these specific times to be diplomatic with the Muslims. This is not the appropriate time to be diplomatic with the Muslims talking about the politics in our time is, is subjective. It's impossible, it's even impossible, it's a, it's a virtual impossibility for it to be subjective anyways. How are you gonna say, how are you gonna say that the ones who are with Trump and the ones who are with um, with uh, Kamala, has, Scamala, Kamala Harris, both have the best interests at, at the Muslims at heart, right? Now is the time for decisiveness, decisiveness and clear speech, not ambiguous speech. Now, this is why we said at the beginning, we have to give Dr. Yasser Qadi a lot of uh, slack, a lot of slack because he did say in the beginning that he cannot express his opinions on the minbar because of, you know, as you all know, we talked about this many, many times. And he said that even his personal opinions, right? He might have strong personal opinions, but you know, and what he is doing right now, he's trying to mitigate an impending fitna that is coming with the Muslims because of these, these elections by saying, you know, don't call this one hypocrite. Don't call that one hypocrite, blah, 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 blah. So he's trying to mitigate the necessary division that will be caused as a result of these elections divisions will be caused because what will happen is no matter who gets in power whether it's is trump or, or skamala those people are going to carry out the agenda of the zionists and then the muslims will be like you see <laughs> and they're gonna be like we told you not to vote for those folks so you can't be talking about in our time it's subjective it's not subjective actually right it's more clear now than it was in the times of Obama and the times of Bush, and it's it's very clear in our times because the the dust and the veil has been moved, removed away from these parties, parties, family. The fact of the matter is, is that democracy is a tool for pacification for the masses. It is also a tool for power for corporate oligarchs. The quicker you understand this is the quicker you will understand how to play within the system, okay? This is one of the main reasons why we hold the position that democracy by nature is kufri. Even before hearing it from any of the ulama, which the ulama have said again, it is a kufri system. You can listen to Sheikh Mukbul about this matter and whatnot. But our esteemed ulama, even before hearing them, we, we understand as black folk, especially we understand that this system is devilish and demonic, right? Especially if you're black. If you're black, the only history you have with democracy is to have it weaponized against you. And it's continuing to, and it's being weaponized against us from its inception. Okay. We are the only people, if you don't know what we're talking about, if you're new here, 
We, black folk, are the only people through Western democratic uh, systems which have been legislatively, militarily, and politically uh, indicted against with the system of democracy. Democracy has always been historically mobilized against us by our own, very own governments. The very own governments that claim to rule us, they will use these systems to enslave us, imprison us, sell us crack, sell us coke, not, uh, make sure that we are not educated. They will use these systems, these very same systems that you are fighting so hard against, uh, fighting so hard to, to protect rather as you as Muslims, they use these systems to oppress us. We know this better than anybody else. I, I highly suggest you go look up. Uh, who am I thinking about, people? <laughs> who am I thinking about again? Dred Scott. Thank you. <laughs> go look Dred Scott. Go look up the 13th Amendment. Go look up what's going on in the favelas in, in Brazil. Go look up the 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 what they did in Argentina to black folk. Go look up what they did to Colombia with uh, black folk. Go look up in Mexico. Now, me black Mexicans finally got recognized in 2015. These are natural citizens of these countries. You can't tell me none. <laughs> are you kidding me? Y'all can't tell me nothing, family. <laughs> you can't tell me nothing. We are not like you immigrants. We're not immigrants. We're not immigrants in the least because we didn't come here by immigration. We didn't immigrate here. But that's a, that's a different topic for a different day. The point is that politics here in the West is a Coliseum event, just like UFC, just like, uh, you know, Major League Baseball, just like uh, NBA. It Politics in the West is a Coliseum event of events, especially American politics. Okay, so every four years, the masses gather together to choose who they think will be their leader. And every four years, the same people that they empower turn around and empower the owners and controllers of financial capital. Okay, every four years. <laughs> they don't empower the people, they, they empower the owners and controllers of financial capital. It has always been like that, okay? Dark, mar dark money, quid pro quo and on and on and on, right? So Zionists, they don't care who's in power because they influence whoever is ruling to support Israel. The same w thing with uh, Big Pharma, which is why in the US you don't have, uh, you know, universal healthcare. It's because of Big Pharma, you get it? Okay, the same thing with the banks. That's why the banks got, you know, bailouts. They bailed out for the banks and not for the people who were losing their houses. The same thing with big oil. The same thing with the military and industrial complex, which is why you have all these wars and on and on and on, right? This is what's happening here, okay? So I lost my train of thought. One second, family. <laughs> the dark money interest, they're the ones who move what is going on in the political landscape, okay? The masses will fight each other over some mundane Im Im issue like immigration or whatnot for example, and dark money moves in a manner that, that they will capitalize on the immigration issue. So no matter which party is in power, they're going to capitalize on it. For example, if you vote for the Republicans, they will capitalize on it by building uh, detention centers for immigrants. And if you vote uh, Democrats, they will capitalize on it by cheap labor. You get it? And all the while, <laughs> the people they suffer, okay? Either way, the people are going to suffer. Right. The money interest in Congress, they also buy out the executive branches. OK, so they buy out the co like Congress. Of course, they buy, buy out the presidency. OK, of course. However, something major happened during Donald Trump's last presidency. Right. In uh, 2016, which has never happened before, which to me was a clear indication, a very indication, clear indication that democracy was coming to a close in the U.S. And we're going to have a different system or something that might resemble it, but it's, it's not going to be the same, same as as uh, what you witnessed before. Right. And I, I, I believe that this election is the final chapter of that. You see, you cannot control the government unless you control the courts and the su Supreme Courts were designed as a to be a check and balance for the executive branch. Correct. That's what they're designed for. OK. But what Donald Trump did is that. He stacked the Supreme Court with Republican judges. This is the first time this ever happened, okay? So now they control the Supreme Court. And if you recall, in 2020, he was trying to use the Supreme Court to actually steal the election, all right? If you recall that, right? However, there's one small problem, right? And that is, okay, so now you got the executive branch, the presidency, you got the Supreme Court, but there is still a very important piece of this puzzle, 
which is that the courts, the only the courts that are left over are the state courts or the appellate courts. OK, paper gold. You see, black folks are chumps. If America were to tell you to bring all the rocks in this country to her and she'll give you a million dollars for it, you'll do it. And the next day she'll tell you we're using rocks for currencies, chump. 